This study is about how error-related processes in the brain impact decision-making processes. These occur in the medial frontal cortex, specifically in the most anterior region of the cingulate cortex. To study the activation of this region, an fMRI will be used. The cingulate cortex is a part of the cerebral cortex directly above the corpus callosum. It deals largely with brain functions such as memory, emotions, learning, and decision making. The anterior cingulate cortex, a part of the cingulate cortex, is activated during reward anticipation and is directly involved in error-related behavior. This part of the brain is closely monitored during this experiment and is highlighted in the picture to the right. Conditioning techniques were used to prime the participants to a specific reward. Conditioning is the process of forming an association between a stimulus and a response. Operant conditioning is the form of learning in which reinforcement and punishment are used to alter the frequency of a behavior. A previous study shows a subject's decision and error processing are dependent on the reward value in operant conditioning. This experiment uses classical conditioning instead. Classical conditioning is a form of learning in which two unrelated stimuli are paired together to produce the same response. Specifically, this study classically conditions its participants to see how the error-related processes are activated in reward and non-reward stimuli. Participants performed a random dot motion direction discrimination task. Participants were told to observe colored dots and answer the direction they moved in. Participants were rewarded for perceiving the dots to move left. No reward was given for perceiving the dots to move right. Regardless of whether participants responded correctly or not, they always received a reward after the dot motion went left and only left. Therefore, no reward is given if the dot motion is in any other direction. This allows for the testing of neural activity in reward error and non-rewarded correct trials, as well as in rewarded, correct, and non-rewarded error trials. This allows us to separately examine the effects of perceptual accuracy and reward value. 18 participants were used, all of which were neurologically and psychologically healthy, right-handed and undergraduate students. Of the participants, nine were female and nine were male, with a mean age of 20 years old. All participants were fully aware of the study and had given consent. Participants were asked to refrain from eating for at least 10 hours prior to the experiment. This was to maximize the value of the juice reward. First, a red fixation point was presented in the center of the black screen for one second. Second, a cloud of small white dots appear around the red fixation point. These white dots move in the left or right direction for half a second. The white dots are shown on the frame and then presented in one of the directions three frames later. The images below show the movement of the white dots in the right direction. To reiterate, a reward would not be given here. Then participants respond to the dot motion direction by, by pressing a button to indicate the perceived direction of the dot. The fixation point changes to a dark red and signals the administration of the juice reward or neutral water sample. Participants were signaled to drink the water sample or the juice sample when the light turned green. An intertrial interval is added as a break between trials. Two main variables were tested. The first variable is whether the participants received a reward or not. The second deals with the coherence of the dots. Coherence deals with the direction that the congregation of dots move in. High coherence means the dots all move strongly and closely in one direction. Low coherence means the dots move more spread out in a direction. Preliminary coherence tests were conducted prior to the actual trials to determine participants' threshold for dot movements. There are several different results to consider for this experiment. The first of which, as expected, is the participants showing a higher accuracy for higher cohesion trials than for the low cohesion trials. This is shown in graph A on the top left and sensitivity to the higher cohesion trials is depicted in graph B. There was, however, some bias as participants tended to prefer choosing the reward-associated side over the non-reward side. This is determined through the higher error in non-reward, low-cohesion trials. Overall, trials that gave the participant a reward yielded better response times and better accuracy. Functional MRI imaging was used to see what parts of the brain were active when the participant was giving a response. 
The first set of images depicts the activity for each response based on correctness. For correct responses, visual areas, like those involved in motion perception, were active, whereas for incorrect responses, other areas were activated, including, to some extent, the anterior cingulate cortex. The next fMRI images were taken as the response was being given by the participant. Activity for correct responses was relatively low, providing no significant data. Significant activity was shown, however, for erroneous responses, spiking in several areas of the brain, including those lifted, listed to the left. The last set of images was taken during liquid delivery. There was very little significant data for this part of the experiment, yielding only the conclusion that error processing occurs most in the non-reward trials, a direct contrast to GLM-2, which concluded that it occurs in the, mo the most in reward trials. Looking at the fMRI images of the experimental subjects show that the activated areas of the anterior cingulate cortex occur separately prior to decision, but have some overlapping after decision and right after feedback. The image on the right shows different areas of the cingulate cortex active, with the different colors showing activation at different periods of time. The green activity shows stronger error-related activity for the reward trials than the non-reward trials. During the reward trials, there was increased error processing activity in the mid-cingulate cortex. It was seen during the experiment that time of activation of the anterior cingulate cortex was immediate for reward stimulus, which were the left moving dots. Reward processing occurs with the onset of the reward stimuli, not the reward itself, suggesting that the subjects give a higher degree of attention priority to a reward-based stimuli. The non-reward stimuli showed a delayed activation of the anterior cingulate cortex, seen during the liquid reward duration. This suggests that the subjects wait for an explicit stimuli for non-reward activity, which means that non-reward stimuli are not given as much attention priority as reward stimuli. The fMRI imaging during the dot discrimination test shows that the visual cortex is highly activated. This is interpreted as the subject's perception of dot stimuli and for their decision-making processing of the dot stimuli. In trials in which the subject gave an incorrect response, there was less activity in the visual cortex. This suggests that less decision-making activity was given to the dot stimuli, meaning that less activity in the visual cortex leads to a lower number of correct responses. It is important to reiterate that the cingulate cortex has four anatomically distinct regions active during the pre-decision period but error processing and reward processing are seen to have slight overlap in the anterior cingulate cortex during the post-decision period. Perhaps the most interesting finding in this study is that a subject's response has no bearing on the reward, yet it was seen that the error processing after decision is greatly influenced by the reward value itself. Comparing this to previous research reveals that subjects in both operant and classical conditioning give responses with higher degrees of accuracy and higher attention priority when a reward is offered. Reward conditions could improve higher cognitive functions related to error processing, such as decision confidence and error correction. This experiment maintains several positive aspects, as well as some parts that could be improved for further research in the future. One example of such an adjustment would be to test with left-handed individuals. While there isn't exactly evidence to suggest this is necessary, a combined study that includes members of both groups, left-handed and right-handed, in addition to including different reward directions with each group, would create a study that incorporates a wide variety of possibilities. An additional possibility, separate from those previously mentioned, is to create a joint experiment using both classical conditioning and operant conditioning. This could allow the researcher to find what type of learning elicits a stronger response from the participant. Despite these changes, the study performed succeeded in taking into account bias as well as creating a method to isolate classical conditioning and focus on one type of learning. Furthermore, empirical evidence in the fMRI images and statistical analysis provide the foundation for reliable research.